Uh, this is MXUX. I'm going to uh, give you my total view on Tesla, the stock price, the market, everything you need to know. Let's get started before the market uh, opens and we get the earnings call. Hi, this is MXUX. Um, I am covering Tesla today. I cover a couple other vehicles, uh, Aptera uh, and the uh, Lordstown Endurance and also the Faraday Future. I think they all come into play in this evaluation. But right now today, we're going to talk about Tesla, where I think it is, where I think it's going. We're going to talk about my prediction for the stock price. And I'm going to do some remote viewing into the future on what the uh, absolute... Uh, effect of future uh, the future uh, is going to be for Tesla uh, Tesla how they're going to affect the future so let's just go uh, get going here so I call this toe Tesla and that is let me just get the highlighter going here uh, theory of everything Tesla okay I have Tesla will home the, uh, 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 own the charge at home market okay I've done analysis in the past and, and this is USA only I'm talking about. This market is only USA market. Only 40% of the homes uh, in the United States are capable of doing uh, at-home charging. And right now, with this present technology, at-home charging is really the only way, feasible way uh, to have an electric vehicle. Um, I know I live in a major metro area. It's not going to work. People in condos with restrictive covenants aren't going to be able to put in the charger. People in apartment buildings aren't going to be able to put in the charger. Homes, they're not going to be able to put in the charger. Uh, if they have an older home with, let's say, 90 amp, 60 amp, some of them have 60 amp service. Even if they have 100 amp service, they may not be able to handle the load of a, uh, a level 2 charger, and this would require extensive retrofitting. This is what I'm talking about. So people that can walk in the door, put a standard uh, level two charger in their garage, 40% of the of U.S. households. I have down here that Tesla will capture this market segment. Um, and I have down here 40% of households, uh, one car per household. This is a 60 million total, total cars. So um, – I predict that uh, Tesla is going to have, well, we're going to see the exact numbers, but they're going to take the, the, the market share, the, the bare, uh, I mean, the absolute max uh, amount of this market compared to other manufacturers. Um, I have down here the uh, approximate uh, TAM is 50 million units, okay? That's at one unit per household. And I'm giving, being generous here, giving 10 million units to competitors. Uh, Tesla already owns this market. Um, they got the power wall. They got the, the the solar roof as well. But I'm just talking about the cars and this uh, charging at home. Um, I'm going to do another video about a charging station that uh, Tesla's putting in Santa Monica. They have a main showroom in Santa Monica, California. There, there are no public... Tesla chargers in Santa Monica. This is what I'm talking about. You got to be able to charge at home, even even with a Tesla at this point. So <clears throat> we got approximately uh, 50 million units in this market. I have that uh, Tesla is gonna is gonna own this market. There's there's no one gonna come along. I mean, Lucid's gonna take a small bit, and GM is gonna take a small bit. Uh, but uh, Tesla is going to own this charge at home market. And so, uh, based on their potential present sales and so forth and production, I see a 50x growth potential. Okay? 50x for Tesla long term. Okay? I believe the numbers are there to support that. You can go over this yourself. And, you know, what is long-term? Ten years. But this is a growth story that's never going to end. They are so far ahead in technology. 
and they have such a brand reputation and um you know the iterative processes that take place when you're in the middle of manufacturing it's hard to beat now so we've established they're going to own this market it's 40 percent of the u.s market this represents a 50x growth potential for tesla going forward and they pretty much have a lock on it in my opinion so uh, i have down here i'm just going over this uh, the 2020 annual market 2020 annual auto market was uh 14 to 15 million units so 40 percent of that is 5 million units. Uh, Tesla produced in uh, 2021 about a little under a million. So uh, Tesla Tesla growth, the potential going forward short term, okay, this is short term. This is within five years, is 161%. Okay. Um their TAM is uh, 5 million. They're at less than a million. They have no real competition. I mean, um, Tesla is, you know, Tesla owns the world. We just live in it, okay? Now I'm going to make a stock price prediction here. Based on these figures and some math I've done back in the napkin, I'm going to set a, talk, a stock price. Uh, of $2,600 a share for uh, Tesla. And that is expanding this basic model I've made in the United States here worldwide. And this is fudging. But I do think this is a reasonable stock price, okay? And this is in the relatively short term over the next one or two years, I would say, okay? And I do believe uh there's going to be a five to one stock stock split uh when tesla reaches this level um and i have this down as a midterm forecast let's say long term is 10 years midterm is five years i i would say between two and five years i wouldn't i would i can imagine it even happening in two years uh but just by way of review Tesla is going to own the home charging, uh, the people that the charge at home sector of the market in the United States. Tesla is going to own it. I mean, Tom Minogli did a uh, whatever his name is, who does the EV show on charging. He just went over the charging requirements of the Ford Lightning. And, you know, I cover the uh, endurance, by the way, the Lordstown endurance can charge on a 110 outlet reasonably for the ford lightning if you want to have the truck power the house you have to buy five thousand dollars worth of electrical equipment and then pay to have it installed and you have to have a dedicated 100 amp service just for that line okay I'm not talking the whole house. I'm talking a dedicated. And anybody that knows anything about electricity will know what I'm talking about. This is crazy. Okay. And uh, no one, you know, there's going to be a very small percentage of the uh, uh, people in the country that can afford it or, or that can afford that, but even have the capability of putting it in their house. Okay, I think this Ford Lightning, when people get a look at these charging requirements and the other uh, charging requirements for the Lightning are onerous as well. I mean, the Lordstown Endurance is such a better car, but we're going to get into charging later here. But in any case, I say Tesla's going to have 40% of the uh, charge uh, uh, of the households in the United States. I think uh, that's a reasonable uh, estimate of the uh, EV market going forward. Um, I think we're at about two or three percent now. Um, again, you know, they have massive uh, 50x growth, I say. I think I don't think that's any news to much people, but I I'm, I went over the numbers and I see 50x easy, twenty six hundred dollar stock price, five to one split.
and I have that down as a midterm forecast. Now, um, some people are going to disagree with me about this, for, but I'm telling you, there's only 40% of the households in, in the United States that can do ch at-home charging right now. Uh, Latecomer OEMs uh, to the market will face a charging wall, a moat, a difficult use case. Okay? Tesla's going to have their chargers installed. They're going to have brand loyalty. They make a great product. Um, these latecomer OEMs are going to have to push into these lower tiered markets where it's going to be difficult but not impossible to put in home charging. It's going to be added expenses. Um, they're also going to move into people that are going to be uh, willing to use public chargers, which you know, in my opinion, is not feasible uh, for, you know, daily use of a vehicle. I think that uh, it's too onerous for most people. Most people. Um, so these late color OEMs, and uh, I think Cadillac's, uh, the new Cadillac's going to be great. I think GM is being discounted in this. Uh, I think GM realizes this. Uh, one of the things GM has come up with is a portable hydrogen uh, fuel cell powered charging unit uh, that's off the grid and so forth. So they're looking into the future on this, and um, I think GM is still going to be in the game. I, I don't. People are saying it's going to be bankrupt. I don't think that's true. But anyway, forty percent of the U.S. households can handle charging at home. Okay, the Tesla yuppies. Okay, Tesla's captured this market. There's no turning back. There's I, I don't see how anybody's going to take this market from them. Um, you know, you could say this is people that would buy BMWs normally, but I think that's too limited of a definition. Um, and again, I have down here, 60% of U.S. households will require up upgrades. Okay? Get an electrician in. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you're going to buy the car, and then you're going to have to pay an electrician, and then you're going to have to put all this stuff in, you know. It's going to turn a lot of people off, if they can even do it. Some of these homes in the United States just cannot handle this. They cannot handle uh, the stress on their home system. Uh, I was looking at an apartment building nearby where I live. I think uh, there's about 40 apartments there. Something like that. They put in a new service box outside. I took a look at it. 200 amp service. 200 amp service for 40, 40 apartments. 40 parking spaces. 40 chargers on 40 chargers on 200 amp service. It's not going to work. Okay, so they're going to require upgrades or have no access to charge at home. So uh, what I'm saying here is the real limiting factor is not consumer acceptance. Uh, I think a lot of people would like to get away from uh, getting repairs done at the cars. They'd like to get away from the dealerships. They'd like to get away from the constant upkeep and maintenance of a uh, ICE vehicle. But this charging issue is the issue, okay? So anyway, Tesla's going to take 40% of, uh, of the charge at home, 40% uh, of the total market, total households. And they're going to basically take 90% of the charge at home market. They're going to own it. There's no stopping them. 50x growth. Uh, like I say, I have uh, two to let's say two to five years, $2,600, and there's going to be a five to one split at $2,600. I do believe, or you know, it might even be before that. It might be at $2,000. Um, and this is a midterm forecast. So. Couldn't be rosier for Tesla. Very few things, uh, you know, are going to get in the way of Tesla. I think everybody, uh, you know, everybody, I've, I've put off making a Tesla uh, video because it's so obvious. Uh, but these are my numbers. And this is what I come up with. Now, this is an interesting item. Uh, demand on the grid is going to increase. As we get more and more adoption of uh, Tesla and other EVs uh, in the market, um, each EV is equivalent to adding three homes to the grid. Okay? 
So uh, long term, when Tesla captures this full uh, 40% of the market, the demand on the grid is going to be 120% of the existing grid. You know, this is a big this is a big change. We're going to have to do massive improvements in the grid structure. Transformers are going to be blowing up. There just isn't going to be enough power, a power supply. Now, Tesla, of course, is going with the solar cells. As you know, in California, they're already making laws now to limit the use of solar power. So anyway, let's just move on with this. 2.6% uh, of new uh, cars are battery electric presently. That's about uh, 400,000 units. So that's like just this small amount, just 2.6%. is like adding 1.2 million homes to the grid. Now, the grid has, has got a lot of things built into it, and these are all home-charged vehicles, okay? So they're going to be charging at night during the off time. But at some point, even that isn't going to be enough of an offset. 37% uh, is the mid core uh, midterm forecast for battery electric vehicle sales? I think as these other vehicles come online, and especially as Tesla lowers their prices, uh, anybody and everybody that can do at home charging is going to do it. They are going to get an electric vehicle. It just makes too much sense. Um, I have thirty seven percent of sales are going to be uh, uh, BEV sales. So that so. so it's just inevitable. The grid and generation will have to upgrade. Uh, nuclear, wind, solar. I've got a couple other ideas coming up as well. I have, I had written a, a whole other section of this presentation on the grid and what we can, some things we can expect or might be able to expect um, when this takes place. Uh, and some stocks and companies that I am interested in regarding this demand on the grid. But to cut time and make this video uh, brief, everybody's yelling at me the videos are too long. Uh, we're going to do it in another presentation. So, uh, the theory of everything uh, Tesla summary. Uh, and I'm just going to expand this worldwide. Uh, Tesla will capture the best major metro audio uh, markets worldwide. So, without a doubt, in these major metro markets, they're going to skim the cream off the market, and they're going to do that worldwide. There's nobody that's going to catch them. They're five, ten years behind the time. Um, other uh, other companies are. Dragging their feet, the OEMs and so forth. I I I am surprised by GMs. GM is, uh, you know, they're they're taking this very seriously. That Ultium plant that's under construction next to the GM Lordstown plant is massive, and it's almost ready to go online. Um, so Tesla is going to be the the number one dog. Everybody else is going to be number two, three, four, five, six. I think there is going to be room in the market. Besides Tesla, for ultra efficient vehicles, and I have down here Aptera. Now Aptera, I have some videos on. You can look at my other videos. It's an ultra lightweight, super efficient vehicle that has solar cells on it that actually can run in a reasonable climate without charging at all. I do believe that once people realize this charging issue and grid issue, that the Aptera is going to take a share of this market as well. And any other ultra light year is another one coming out. I don't know how far along they are. Aptera is just about ready to go into production. And I am predicting that Aptera is going to be the new Volkswagen bug. Only it's going to be BEV. Okay, the other uh, segment, uh, there's going to be Tesla. There's going to be ultra efficient vehicles. And EV fleets will be relatively easy to deploy. Now, this is with the charging aspect, and we know that Tesla's got the semi, but there's also delivery fleets and other fleets. Uh, and the, 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 uh, what this is about is they're going to be industrial areas. They're going to have the power supply. It's going to be relatively easy for them to install chargers and have a charging base where this truck can be parked overnight. 
uh, it's not going to be the same issue that homeowners are facing. They also, unless legislation uh, comes in the way, they're going to be able to use a uh, vehicle to grid uh, uh, and use those battery electric vehicles actually to earn income. So I think uh, so you're going to have Tesla is going to take 90 percent of the market. 10% is going to go to other OEMs and uh, battery electric manufacturers. Uh, ultra, ultra efficient vehicles like the Aptera are going to go, they're going to get around this charging issue. So they're, they're going to take a market share. Okay. Fleet visuals, uh, uh, fleet vehicles, of course, they're also going to be easy to deploy. They're going to get around this charging, uh, issue. And, uh, Lordstown Motors right here, uh, another firm I cover is going to take a share. Lordstown has teamed up with Foxconn. Foxconn knows what they're doing. Let me tell you, uh, they have the light, the light duty pickup truck. Okay. Which is going to the endurance, which is going to be out. They have the soft dies to make a high top delivery van. The one that Amazon's clamoring for, it's going to be built on the same platform as the endurance. Again, really efficient, uh, drivetrain, uh, 30% more regen than a normal EV, uh, small battery, you know, uh, easy to charge. Uh, and in this fleet application, Lordstown Motors is going to take a share. And I'm going to add too, as I said earlier, uh, the endurance can charge at home reasonably on a 110 line. Because that battery in that vehicle is small and that drivetrain is so efficient with the hub motors and the 30% extra regen. So I think uh, these two vehicles are, are something that is going to take a share. It's one of the reasons I cover them. Another one I think that's going to take a share is Faraday Future uh, in the ultra luxury uh, category, of course. But I think overall they have a very unique vehicle uh, that... Uh, kind of sneaks in behind Tesla a little bit. They're, I think they're going to be able to grab some market share too. But that's going to be with the charge at home crowd, okay? So so that's going to be it. Tesla, ultra efficient vehicles and EV fleets. And then you're going to have, you know, that 10% whatever, okay? Uh now after this when everything when the dust settles, okay? Uh, when this uh, charge at home crowd has all been saturated with vehicles, the remaining EVs are going to be tiered. They're going to be lower cost. Uh, they're going to be lower capabilities. We're talking about electric scooters, uh, low range electric cars. Um, so this is going to be the market, in my opinion. You know, Tesla. And whoever, uh, whatever, uh, uh, you know, the 10% that make it along with Tesla, ultra-efficient vehicles, fleet vehicles, and then we're going to have this lower tier, lower cost, lower capability uh, range of vehicles. Um, right now, uh, the, no, the OEMs are going to need a technology breakthrough, okay, to compete, solid-state battery, whatever. I mean, it's mind-numbing, the battery uh, permutations and comp uh, uh, complications. Or they're going to have to have really compelling products to compete. I think uh, the Cadillac Lyric is a very compelling product, okay? Uh, they're keeping the cost down on that. I think that's going to be a winner. The Silverado, I don't know. I think uh, if and when the Cybertruck comes out, I mean, there's people that are never going to buy it, but it's going to be a monster, too. It's going to be a big vehicle. Uh, the demand for EVs is going to increase. It's an inevitability. Okay. It's being uh, mandated in some areas, and this is, a, is across the world. And many municipal governments are mandating, uh, you know, electric vehicle, all electric vehicles within towns. Um, you know, the fleets are being mandated to be a certain percentage electric. Um, it's simply an unstoppable force. 
and it's gone beyond market demand. As I said, they're they're being EVs are being legislated uh, into the market. So, what can we note from that? Prices will go up. Demand is going to go up. Prices are going to go up. We see this with Tesla already. What's what's their average price increase? What is it? I don't even know. But, uh, but this is going to be across the board. Uh, we're going to see this. Uh, you know, the Ford Lightning launched. It's basically been a hoax. I mean, the low end one, no one can order. Uh, dealers are charging thirty thousand dollars over sticker. Um, you name it. I mean, you know, if you want to spend ninety grand, you can buy a uh, a Lightning. Um, it's going to be the same with the Silverado. Uh, Tesla's going to put out the the highest end truck they have first. The only uh, electric and the only electric pickup truck that's going to make a difference is going to be the Endurance, the Lordstown Endurance. In my in my estimation, direct sales model. 55k solid pricing i think it's i think it's going to be a winner um so internal combustion engines will not go away and again this is uh, this has to do with the 60 percent of households that cannot charge effectively at home but it, it's going to be get whittled away uh, into a smaller market share over time as technologies and things overcome these charging limitations. But everybody says ICE is going to be done next year, three years. Or, no, that's not going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. This charging hurdle is too high. Um, people are Some people are just simply people that tow a lot. Uh, CVs just are not good at towing. Extreme climates possibly... I don't think that's been, you know, you can see this recent problems with Tesla um, and, and just people that don't have the charging infrastructure. OK, uh, so ICE is not going to go. It's going to become a smaller, uh, smaller market. Guess what? Prices are going to go up in ICE. OK, and then you're going to have uh, the ICE fuel costs are going to go up. You know, gas costs are going to go up because OPEC is not going to take a loss. They're going to stick together, and they're going to drive up the price of oil as their uh, the market share of ICE vehicles drops and the demand for oil drops. They're just going to there isn't going to be a you know a supply demand thing. You know, oh no 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 no. They're they're not they're, they're going to rise. They're, I don't think oil is going to go down again. Uh, I mean, once we get past this pandemic phase of the economy and move into a roaring. Uh, macroeconomic environment, uh, gas prices are going to go up. So EV prices are going to go up. Gas price, uh, ice prices are going to go up. Transportation is going to get expensive. Okay. Um, the hydrogen EG market may become a thing with low low carbon uh, biomass generation. Uh, Tesla. I mean, Nikola, we don't like to mention that word. Uh, GM has got some uh, fuel cell powered, hydrogen powered uh, chargers, uh, portable chargers they're working on. Um, the thing is, the problem with hydrogen is it, it, it takes power to, to make it. If we can get into these uh, biomass uh, generation methods, and there's algae, there's uh, you know, cash to tra trash to cash uh, biomass from uh, food waste, they split out the methane. Uh, there's also they're talking about using wastewater from wastewater plants as a source of hydrogen. If they can harness these hydrogen, these green hi hydrogen sources uh to accentuate to add to um you know air uh, uh solar wind and and uh, geothermal and the rest uh this this whole hydrogen uh, market could take a turn and you know hi hydrogen you know it's funny because hydrogen you can run it through a fuel cell and run an electric motor um who's the guy that went to area 51 what's his name Anyway, there's a video of him on YouTube. He's driving around in a Corvette. He adapted an internal combustion engine to run 
on hydrogen. It's completely doable. So, I mean, I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, but the point is, if they come with a low carbon uh, biomass generation method, um, you know, these OEMs, they might be able to use these ice engines. That's a, that's a head scratcher, but I'm telling you, it's a possibility, but that's a remote possibility. The biomass generation and uh, using hydrogen fuel cells and so forth uh, is, a, is a better bet. But anyway, so all the prices are going to go up. I think this is going to force hydrogen uh, into the forefront. I think uh, that's some years away. Anyway, what's going to happen in the end? The whole situation will raise demand for Tesla and other EV robo-taxis because people are not going to be able to afford to buy these cars and uh, they're not going to be able to charge them at home. So they're going to, it's going to be a timeshare. Okay, and once again, Tesla has the lead in this, I believe, with their uh, robo taxi um, system that they're going to roll out here. But we don't know exactly when that's going to take place. But again, it looks like Tesla's ahead all the way around. I hope you guys like this uh, presentation. It's the first one I did on Tesla. Of course, I'm bullish on Tesla. I, I wanted to put in here how the other brands of vehicles uh, I'm working uh, with on my channel fit into this Tesla model, and I think they do. Uh, I was going to go into this uh, grid expansion uh, and uh, new forms of electrical generation, but I'm cutting this uh, presentation now. Uh, good luck in the market. Looking forward to the Lordstown Motors uh, quarterly call. It's very important. Also, Tesla. Um, and again, just to go up here, close on this. I'm looking at 2600 a share. And when it hits that uh, level, 5 to 1 split, I'm saying 2 to 5 years, probably 2 years. Okay, this is MXUX. Uh, this is the theory of everything on Tesla. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>